The problem of weapons proliferation in Nigeria is showing no signs of abating following the revelation that more than 6 million firearms are in the possession of civilians in the country. We'll have analysis of this report by SBM Intelligence. There have been increasing calls for the withdrawal of the nomination of some new resident electoral commissioner ahead of the Nigerians general elections in 2023. We'll look at the reasons behind this and overall impact on our democracy. And off the press returns this morning as we analyze the big stories on the front page of today's national dailies. Well, very good morning to you. We're back with the Breakfast of Plus TV Africa. It's a bright Tuesday morning. And we're reaching you live from our studios on Victoria Island, Lagos. Mercy is looking already bright and ready to go. Mercy, good morning to you. Good morning. And um, it, it's, a, it's a brand new day. We're here with the important conversations that will be of interest to you. And like you heard in the intro, we have two big topics to discuss. I guess I'll stand by ready to dish out those juicy and interesting analysis. But Mercy, we start off with our top 20 segment this morning. Yeah, so on a top trending uh, conversation, first is uh, the fact that you have a former Lagos State uh, First Lady, a First Lady of Lagos State, uh, between uh, 1999 and 2007, and also uh, a Senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria representing the Lagos Central District right here. Uh, there's been several, there's a video that actually made it to social media. I mean, it's been generating different reactions. But it might also interest you to know that this video was, uh, as of uh, 2019, it's an old video, I wore in 2022. So, but that video talks about Senator Remy Tunubu, uh, who, who chastised the southern, southeasterners. Uh, there's a lot that was said. I'm, I'm sure that we can actually put out that uh, track for you to watch and listen. Well, uh, that, that's actually the former First Lady of Lagos State and also Senator Rami uh, In that video, you know that uh, it was the language is Yoruba. Yeah. But, uh, so I'm, 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 wait, I'm waiting for the, the, the interpretation so <laughs> the I can interpretation. listen to it. <laughs> of course, we, we, we've actually seen the interpretation uh, all yeah, over the space. Indeed. Now, the conversation uh, she was having with some people uh, she, where she was talking about, you know, the... Uh, Southeastern persons, I mean, Southeasterners. And she said that she would invoke the deity, you know, to take out the people of the, chase them away from Lagos. But prior to that, she said that she, uh, she will entreat that, I mean, the, uh, the deity to chase the Igbo people out who didn't marry the Yoruba and uh, we will inherit them. Given how much we love the Igbo people, you no, you, I mean, you now want to spoil everything uh, that we have, the only tribe in this place. Hausa is here, Calabar. I mean, she talked about different tribes, but she's saying, hey, how can they come to spoil everything? And um, this is me paraphrasing now. It's not verbatim because it, it might just be difficult for me to go verbatim. But in all of the conversation that she had, she talked about uh, the fact that, hey, 
the Igbos are here, we're very tolerant of them. Uh, we have the houses, we have the Calabar, we have different tribes. And then, you know, all of a sudden the Igbos are being very difficult and it's time for them to have, you know, they've been very accommodating of them in the Yoruba land. And all of a sudden they're saying, hey, we cannot, you know, uh, they can have uh, a president from the south, we're talking about Lagos here. Uh, that's the conversation. Mm. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Uh, we have to quote her. You know, um, I, I know that Betsy, you've been in Lagos for some time paying oh, yeah. taxes, so you should, you should be speaking about by now. But I, I mean, maybe we should take a, bit, a little bit of what she said. Uh, okay, so to go verbatim with what she said, she said that we will entreat all deities of Lagos to chase Igbo people out. Igbo didn't marry Yoruba, we will inherit them. Given how much we love Igbo, you want to spoil everything. You are not the only tribe in this place. Uh, you're not the only tribe in this place. House are here. Accom we accommodate them. Calabar here. We accommodate them. Uh, Igbos are proving difficult. We will inherit you despite the love we have for you. Others are here and we accommodated them. Well, people choose to read different meaning uh, yeah. to the video. I mean, that's what a lot of persons are saying. Some people say it's a joke. But it took me a lot of... I mean, Kofi, it took me... You know, a lot of understanding. I, I need to check the internet again to understand that that was a former first lady. And, you know, I was worried for, <laughs> for a All second. Right. I, 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 you know, I, the context is very important in issues like this. Context, context, context. Um, and I'm happy you were able to give us the word for word, or let me say the, the, the interpretation for those who do not speak Yoruba. Context is important. Um, this was 2019, the general elections. Um, like someone said, you know, off air in the studio, she didn't know she was being recorded. Um, there's a whole lot. In fact, there's another video someone sent me yesterday where you go see her sitting down with somebody who is um, uh, ha is uh, physically challenged on the road. You know, so there's a context. I think there was some some problem somewhere, uh, and um, she she was they met her, and as a result of that, she had to say these things. But for for the devil's advocate. Let's try that. Some people say, "Oh, but people are missing where she said in 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 this video where she said um, uh, we love evil people." Okay, uh, despite the love we have for you, um, so so people point to that that she was coming from a different point of view, and people need to really know the story behind this to, to be able to judge. However, however. Of course, in this era of um, you know uh, the media, power of the media, not even before social media became a thing, political correctness is there. You know, you should be careful about what you say in because it could be misconstrued. And um, the tension in the country these days is quite high. You know, this was from 2019. Um, however, they say the internet never forgets. However, they say the internet never forgets. Uh, and um, you know, we 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 we. we witnesses to what's been happening in different parts of the world where people go and dig up what was said in 1991. You understand? They dig up what was said in 1991 and then you are, you are put on, on trial for it. You know, you're put on trial for it. They go and dig up what was said in 1985. You are put on trial for it. So this is 2019. It's not too far. It's not too far. And the words were strong. The words were very, very strong. And it's... Um, Beholds on her at this point to come out to maybe explain to the public what exactly uh, she she meant and what was behind that. Uh, 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 if she if she comes out, then of course she has a chance to put this right and probably even say sorry if she thinks she was wrong. But those from the southeast increasingly have said that they don't think they will be allowed to vote. They've said, you know, in in 2019 they were not allowed to vote freely and fairly in legal state. You know, and uh, so that context that context is there. Uh, somewhere it's enfranchised in 2019 in Lagos State. That context is there. Um, so it's very important that she comes out to clear the air. In the in the in the interest of peace, unity. You know, it was um, Imo State Governor Hopus Odima who said uh, some days ago that uh, it was built Port Harcourt, and it got Port Harcourt people angry. You know, some of the comments we should think twice about. Even if you feel that it's it's true, you look for a better way, a diplomatic way, Messi to to put these things across. And they're politicians. I'm sure they understand the act of diplomacy, um, the act of um, tact as well. It's very important.
It's very important. Yeah, All right, but, but, let's... But, 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 yeah, but uh, yeah. as much as, I mean, uh, that's a very valid point that you have actually raised, but we cannot also ignore the fact that we need to understand what has constantly put us aside or divide us for the dividers. Now, if you know, if, if you follow the polity over time, it feels like we're more divided than ever. It, it, it doesn't, I mean, this is not the first time. We're not just waking up to realize that we have different ethnic groups, uh, over 250 or thereabouts and different languages in Nigeria. But it feels like um, that's already catching up with us. And in 2022, we seem to be divided more than ever. So I also think that it might be responsible, that we take responsibility for our actions. And that's very important, especially those who actually occupy public offices. We don't expect that to become the Jesuses of our generation, or black Jesus, as it were. But we also expect that they understand the dynamics, the problems. I mean, for everyone who's actually vying for political office in 2023, you know, hoping to become a governor, hoping to become the president and what have you in different political platforms, we need to understand that the major problem with our country is the issue of unity. We have been divided. And of course, you, you know that several groups and persons are agitating. I could also wake up and say, hey, I do not want to become uh, part of this entity because I have a right to denounce this entity. I mean, or even also say, hey, I want to become a republic. And what have you? So we need to understand that you know the issue of division seem to be on, on, on the front burner, and because we're f stakeholders in this business and in this political Nigeria, then we should know better. Understand that some people say it was a joke. I mean, that's the um, reaction that we got from several persons saying, "Oh, it was a joke." A lot of people say, "Oh, that was actually a joke. She didn't really mean it. She meant it. She didn't mean it." Whether or not it's a joke, we need to understand that we're in very, very, very serious times, very sensitive, and it's important that we're careful with the things that we say. Unfortunately, that video was, I mean, from 2019, but it resurfaced in 2022, just ahead of the elections. Let's be very cautious and understand what it is. I mean, it won't be that we're the first to be uh, a country with different ethnic groups and different nationality. We can still be together and ensure that we move forward. We, we can't be in Nigeria and be against Nigeria, whether it's a joke or not, but let's be very cautious with the statements and comments that we make. I mean, that should be a take home. I mean, that's my take home, you know, from this particular reaction. But like you rightly stated, Kofi, we're hoping that she'd come out and, uh, you know, clear the air as regards uh, that particular video that made the round. All right, uh, I'll take the next one. Nigerians have taken the social media to, um, uh, react to the choice of um, Anthony Anderson. He's a popular American actor. We all love to watch him. Watching him since he was a kid, you know, he's actor, uh, these um, uh, teenage sweetheart movies, you know, <laughs> and very funny movies and everything. And he's grown, you know, he's become a, a, an adult. And, you know, I, I've watched him over the years and uh, he's doing his thing in Hollywood. Uh, the 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 headies happens to be for my hip hop world awards, and uh, this is the biggest musical or pop popular musical music awards, the pop music awards in Nigeria. It's been holding in Nigeria since inception, as as far as I can recollect. This time around, it was uh, hosted or held in the United States city of Atlanta, in the state of Georgia. I mean, if you look at the cities that have a healthy Nigerian population in the United States, you can look at um, Baltimore, Washington, D.C., um, uh, Dallas or Houston, you have New York, and I think Atlanta is in there. Atlanta is also a, a center of entertainment in America after, uh, uh, you know, Hollywood, you know, and other parts of California. So it's not a, a mistake that they took it to Atlanta. Um, people have been asking why did they take the awards there, but this is what they did. They took the awards there, and Anthony... Uh, uh, Anderson was scheduled to co-host that event with uh, Osasi Godaro, and um, it was held on Sunday. The awards were held on Sunday. Now, some Nigerians feel that the organizers should have used uh, a, as co-host one who has good knowledge of African artists, and uh, they accused Anderson of, of making a joke of the Hades from the start of the show to the end. So reactions on Twitter. Uh, one said, uh, not saying Anthony Anderson wasn't good, but come on, this is Nigeria's biggest award. At least uh, the Hades would have brought someone who knows uh, more about Afrobeat, Nigerians, or Nigerian music to, uh, uh, to, core, to the core. Trevor Noah would have related more with the audience. 
Uh, you can see another one there as is uh, shown um, on your screen. Anthony Anderson is hosting the Hades. Uh, okay, this is saying, let me just get to that particular one here. Yeah. This is saying, uh, I'm a proper, I mean, proper tears. Um, we got Anthony Anderson to host the Hades and didn't give him a proper education of the people who will be presenting. He asked for Adekunle Goldis, this brother, and every American presenting has been dissing the show award or the award show. Um, another one says, um, Anthony, Anthony Anderson is hosting the Hades. First, they take the show abroad. Now, they're using someone that knows nothing about the past of the show uh, to host. Western validation is real. Uh, that's the one you see on your screen. Another one said Nigerian humor and American humor are not the same. Anthony Anderson is hosting a Nigerian event. It would definitely not go smooth. Imagine basketball hosting the Grammy. They might also find it hard to connect with him, just like the Nigerians, uh, Nigerians found it hard to connect with AA. All right, and push hashtag 15. There are lots of uh, comments, lots of comments. One said um, Anthony Anderson casting Hades is, and his co-host trying to shut him up but he refused. He all told me CK was going to be here. Whiskey was going to be here. Thames was going to be here. None of these African artists showed up. A man doesn't care. All right. So uh, uh, it, it's, it's quite interesting what people are saying. But um, some of those also, I mean, people feel the reason the head is may have been taken uh, to the United States was probably to give it a bigger uh, uh, profile. And over the years, especially in recent times, uh, some of these artists have become bigger. You know, likes of Whiskey and... Um, and, and so on and so forth, David O, they, they have shunned the, the headies. They, they don't come in recent years. They don't show up for it. Uh, some of them don't even send a representative. And maybe they feel that because they're winning, you know, uh, mobile awards, you know, MTV awards, they're getting nominated for Grammys. This award is not figuring the world. So they don't even show up. They don't even send a representative, rather. So maybe this may have been a way of saying, no, we want to show that we are big and, you know, whiskey should attend our, our ceremony. Um, you know, uh, David O should attend, you understand. Still, like you heard someone saying, they didn't show up. From what I, I didn't watch, from, from the reports I have, they didn't show up. So um, it, it's, it's interesting to see. Mercy. Well, very interesting to see. I mean, if you look at, you know, the reaction, and, and there might just also be a point to what you have actually stated. For me, I would also think that it's like, you know, bringing government closer to the people, let's say, take their words closer to them. Mostly you find out that some of these artists might just be, you know, around the corner. Uh, and so maybe if we take it, you know, to Atlanta, it would just be easy for them to take the next available flight or jet in and jet out from it. But that's on the one hand. I know that a lot of persons have criticized, you know, the reason for taking the awards outside of Nigeria. I mean, you know, to Atlanta, that's the United States. And the, the truth is that the, these organizers really do have, you know, choice. And, and I mean, they have a right to whether or not hold it. There's nothing that really restricts them from holding this event in Nigeria or outside of Nigeria. That's on the one hand. So uh, I, I don't think they committed any crime. That's it. But I also understand the concern, especially when a lot of persons talked about the host, despite his profile and his criteria. I mean, if you look at it, his profile and his personality and who he is, he's a comedian. But somewhere in my mind, it felt like it's a deja vu that I saw that it was Bovi and Osas that were going to host this event. I really don't know if it was really true. Not like I've actually folded up to the latter, but... Somehow, it feels like, you know, there was once upon a time, there was a flyer with Osas and Bovi. That's, that's what I keep seeing, a picture. And I've been looking for a picture of Bovi or, you know, basket mouth, whoever, with Osas. I don't know where that's coming from, but I don't know. Maybe I've actually seen it somewhere, but I'm still trying to go back to see it. Right. I think the conversation and the buzz, apart from the categories, a lot of persons haven't really talked about. Yes, we've talked about the categories and nomination itself, but some persons have really dwelled on, you know, the combination. You having uh, Anthony Anderson uh, co-hosting that event, and he didn't really sit down with a lot of persons. But maybe, and some of the points that were raised is the issue of validation, you know, Western validation and what have you... Uh, Every other time, we need to have this endorsement to feel very great and to ensure that, hey, hey, maybe we're probably competing with the Grammys and uh, all not what. But I think that 
we, we feels like at some point we had an agreement that we we need to patronize you know local consumption because where where we are today economically because we do not patronize you know ourselves we're talking about made in Nigeria uh, consuming Nigerian products and what have you and uh, I would look at you know the reason for taking out if you take out for instance taking out the um, Hades out of Nigeria or out of Lagos would have actually cost us some you know economic benefits that would mean that we've exported all of the economic benefits you know outside of Nigeria at the time where we were hoping to develop our economy. So it felt like we had a memo, a memo already. Uh, the memo was actually passed that, you know, let's patronize Nigeria, let's, uh, you know, export our own culture. I mean, let's stop importation. But however, we exported and we continue to import another culture, another person. Because if you look at the economy, uh, all of the resources that was actually chunked out there wasn't developing our economy. We took it out outside. All of the flights. Imagine how many persons had traveled out of the country, you know, just to be part of that event. Imagine the hotels that would have benefited, you know, from having all of these persons there. Imagine those who would have actually gone to different restaurants to eat. Uh, all of that didn't come into our economy. It just went outside. So, um, yes, I would understand with a lot of persons who don't really agree with having the events going outside of Nigeria because of the economic benefits. And also, why can't we? Don't we have persons who can actually, you know, project, who can actually uh, co-host that event outside of Nigeria? It's, it's, it's one thing that we took it outside of Nigeria. It's another thing that we have, you know, uh, some of some the person co-hosting when we have fantastic comedians, people who understand the dynamics and understand the history. Uh, I followed the report just like Kofi would say, not like I really watch, but you saw a lot of persons asking questions. He doesn't really understand, and at some point he was dissing. I understand the dissing where you say some artists will be here, but they weren't there, and that's a different conversation entirely because we're not persons who they feel like we are given to saying one thing and doing a different thing entirely, and, and that's not part of it. But to be very honest, some of the concerns that have been raised are very valid. You know, it's really valid. But I hope that we begin to appreciate and understand that we need to keep the money here. We need to grow our economy, right? We, we, we need to project ourselves in a good light. I'm just saying that for the Hades that happened, we have lost a lot of monies and resources. It's just gone into, uh, you know, enriching another economy. That's why we were going through. Imagine that was done here. It, it, would, it would benefit businesses, benefit every other person in the space. Well, it is what it is. That's what some people will say. Uh, moving away quickly uh, for the want of time, uh, that's also in the top trending. The federal government has filed, or federal government files fresh 24 count charges against Abu Kiari, and you know the Abu Kiari situation. But the interpretation, especially amongst legal practitioners, is that the government will understand the dynamics. So it feels like there's a lot of politics going on, and it feels like politics is always what happens with almost everything. So yes, there's a case. There's a need to extradite him because there's a case to answer. But because he has a case already in Nigeria, it makes it almost impossible for him to leave Nigeria. Uh, that's it. If there's a case ongoing here, uh, it's not possible for him to be, uh, you know, moved to the United States or to any other part to answer question because he has another case. There's a case here and there's a law for it. Now having this other case, people are saying this is just part of the politics. Government is behind all of this. And then they are playing the politics that they are playing 24 hours after or having cases been uh, the case of him not uh, declaring some of his assets and what have you. And this has been discovered. There's a lot that's going on in our polity. But we'll definitely uh, be here to bring you to speed with yes, all that's yes. happening. Yes, so, 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 so um, according to, to one of the papers, they say, they said that uh, about 207 million naira. Uh, and about 17,598 euros were discovered in his, uh, his account. These are uh, three bank accounts. Uh, also various assets in Abuja and Borno State, which include shopping malls. I hope there is really shopping malls because well, we've got shopping malls in, in this part of the world. Sometimes no shopping mall. But shopping malls, um, residential estates, uh, uh, polo playground is a police officer, super cop, lands and farmland. You know, belonging to to this Manaba carry, um, so of course the federal government, on the basis of this, has filed a fresh 24 count charge or against uh, him. Um, you know, 14 assets being uncovered. So this is before the Abuja Division of the Federal High Court. 
14 assets. And it's quite interesting to see a public officer having all these. You ask, ask him, I mean, where does the money come from? Maybe he has, you know, the, 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 the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria uh, is clear on the uh, Code of Conduct for Public Officers. It's, it's clear, and um, it's, it's, this code of conduct is, is sacrosanct, but actually, it's almost like it doesn't even exist. And if you go there and you read what it is contained in the code of conduct for public officers as contained in the CFR in 1999, you'd see that a lot of things have been flouted, you know, and um, this is why people can do things and get away with it. As a public officer, you're not meant to have a business. Yeah, he's you, not meant to have a business. As, as a public officer, the only business you're permitted by the constitution to have is, is, a fa is agriculture. <laughs> yes, agriculture. No, but so, that's, that, that's so, very so interesting. He, he has, if he has farmlands, um, you know, and all that, what about the shopping malls? You know, and expect to receive any gift. The only gift you can receive is when you have a funeral of a close relative, a family, a close relative, then you can receive gifts. You understand? That's why it's, uh, some of them go, the politicians go to funerals a lot. Because <laughs> that funeral is where, you know what I'm saying? So um, the fresh charges are filed, you know, um, by the uh, NDLA's Director of Prosecution and Legal Services on August 30. Uh, some people feel that this may be another ploy to just continue to keep him in the country. Of course. Um, you, we, know the, we know the phantom uh, uh, um, uh, application made by the um, Attorney General, Minister of Justice, to extradite him. I say phantom because that's, in effect, that's what the, the judge labeled it. You know, he said Malami should have known. He knows better. So it was, it was phantom. Um, so this is where we are. I think um, it's enough drama for one day. We can move on. I mean, let's just, just leave these people to do what, they, what they're no, doing. But, but just as, um, the, I mean, just as we... Didn't they know he had 14, he had 14 uh, assets? Did he declare now? the 14 assets? Okay. So so now it's just he, he, he didn't declare. Just, just, How are they supposed to know? So he just woke up and then discovered he had he has fourteen assets. But, but, but did he we, declare the fourteen we, we have assets? To go this man. Because the, the, the point I, is, I did he Ameri declare the fourteen the, assets? The Americans should should forget about receiving him anytime soon. Maybe then, maybe next year. I don't. That, that, that's the size of a conversation. <laughs> we'll take a break, and when we return, it'll be time for us to look through the papers this morning. Please stay with us.